Now, Lucinda, you touched on your story just a little bit, but tell us what we can expect when when we're reading about Lavender Hills, when we're reading about you. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that. I, I think one of the big things for, for myself is that I have the platform to speak about all the other women from Lavender Hill mm -hmm. that are doing sterling work in their respective homes and backyards. Um, for an example, four of our informal settlements are led by women. And these are women that are never been seen. They are never acknowledged, working under so much pressure and strain with no support. And when Women's Zone came to Lavender Hill and how I was nominated, one of my volunteers from Denmark saw the article and she wrote from Denmark. And when I received the call from Women's Zone, I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what it was about. And um, Anna is her name that nominated. She organized to be in South Africa when Women's Zone came to us. And we sat in the back of my Wendy house because I ran the project from my dining room for the past seven years. Started in the garage with two Wendy houses. And I had the opportunity not to just speak about my work as Pelisa Abufazi, project that I started in my garage that looks at bringing support to women and children, older persons that are victim of abuse. But it was also to tell the Greater Cape Town about the other women mm. on the Cape Flats in Lavendale that are fantastic and phenomenal. And they are the women that I work with, the women that we support, the women that I get up to o'clock in the morning when there's a abused child or an abused older person. And these stories are never told. My story was never told. And Women's Zone came, group of women. Yeah. I call them the, the pioneers. Um, and, and interesting that our picture on the book is, is a statue. And there's not yeah. a lot of statues of women in Cape Town. No. And our book symbolizes that it's a mobile statue yeah. of 13 stories of 13 women. But it's also about 13 communities yeah. that would never ever be placed on a platform in Cape Town. So I, I feel really humble to be part of, of this book, but I also feel humble that because it's Women's Month and every year we celebrate Women's Month, we really don't look at the other women that we don't see, the women that we don't touch, those women that are never mentored. Um, we don't find other women coming into Lavendale and say, I'm going to take your hand. I'm going to teach you, for an example, how to financially manage your project or to write a report or to do a register. So I use the Women's Zone platform to speak about the other women that we forget that they are and trying to get the support to Lavender Hill via my story. Yeah. I think central to um, what Women's Zone is trying to do, we said, you know, Cape Town is a very segregated city, no matter what we say. People mm -hmm. kind of stay in their areas. And we said, it will be the women who change the mother city. But how do the women change the mother city? And we thought, we start by seeing each other. And how do we begin to see each other? Well, if we tell each other our stories. Because when you sit and listen to someone telling their story, all your assumptions about them get blown away and the masks start to peel away and suddenly I stop seeing a black woman, a white woman, the gay woman, the poor woman, the rich woman and I see a woman, a human being just like me, bleeds the same blood, cries the same tears, I recognize myself in you and maybe we were hoping that if we can do that often enough we can really begin to see each other. Mm -hmm. So the book has been one of the projects of Women's Zone um, this year, instead of, I mean, our, our logo is a tumbleweed, so we tumble, you know, we travel, we see ourselves as a traveling collector of stories. This year, instead of traveling, we are holding storytelling in First Thursdays at Mukhalakwena Gallery in Church Street. And there, women come and they share stories, and so the storytelling and the story sharing has continued. Um, we also, on Women's Day, are having a, a women's walk from the District 6 Homecoming Center. On Sunday, um, we should be there by 11, and we should leave the Homecoming Center at 12. And it's about women coming together. Come, walk with other women, 
in unison together with other women but meet another woman that you don't know and on your walk have a conversation talk to her about yourself I think it's so that's so important listen, yeah because we're surrounded by so many women but we don't speak to each other yeah, yeah. and we don't listen mm. many times we we want to say what we have to say but there, there is something so powerful about being heard that when someone actually sat mm -hmm. and listened to my story it was like I am seen I'm not just mm -hmm. something I am seen I I matter a little bit more than I did before people listened um, and we're talking about telling and sharing stories Lucinda tell me about a story you heard from a powerful woman that that maybe changed the way you thought um, and, and made you the person who's sitting here today? So I think the, the, the woman that really inspires me is Michaela from Menenberg. Mm -hmm. And she's an 18 year old mm -hmm. um, young woman that. Bronwyn. Uh, Bronwyn. Bronwyn, sorry. Bronwyn, Bronwyn yeah. yeah, Bronwyn. And she, she's a woman that, against all odds, are uh, the sea to success in Menenberg. And if. You know, if people just look at Manenberg and listen to Manenberg and how many times Manenberg are on the news for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. When we drove the, I took my daughter with, and my daughter's 15, and Bronwyn um, does journalism and she dances capoeira. But the strength that this young girl had in a community where the youth, they don't, they are so trapped in the, in the, circumstances of gang violence, in the circumstances of drugs, in the circumstances of just poverty and all else, that this girl is a beacon. Mm. And to my 15-year-old daughter, when we left, she said, I have taken so much courage from, from her. Mm. Um, courage that, number one, she is the pillar in a family. Mm. She is the pillar in the community with the dance that you do and also the voice that she has to advocate. So we have this young woman from Manenberg that is able to stand the ground and say, there is good in Manenberg. I'm here in Manenberg. I'm going to become, I, I think she wants to study journalism when she's done, mm -hmm. when she's finished with school. And she said, I will come back to Manenberg and I will plow back. And for me, that was, that was my aha moment, my wow moment. I cried when I was there because I too work with youth in Lavendale. And I think the one thing for me that saddens me is that some of our youth forgot to dream. Mm. And when I went to Manenberg, it motivated me to look at Bronwyn and say, we well, is a young woman and she's still dreaming mm. and she has big dreams. What have I taken back from a story? I went back to my youth and I said, when this book comes out, I want you to read her story. Yeah. And I want you to remember that no matter what your circumstances are, it doesn't determine your destiny. Yeah.